Drum for the Song podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to Drum for the Song podcast. I am your host, Dane Campbell. Today's guest is a little bit different than normal. It's Thomas Bath, who is uh, head of international A&R for Sona Drums. So welcome, Thomas. How are you? Thank you. I'm, I'm doing very, very well. Um, thanks for having me. Um, oh. Really looking forward to to this one. No, no problem. Thanks for agreeing to do it. And um, I know this is going to be interesting to a lot of drummers out there. Um, mm. Normally, I speak to, I guess, guys in bands, which I know you're not technically in a band at the moment, but um, you've got a really mm. interesting job, which, reg- you know, whether the guys are into Sona drums or not, it's a really interesting way to see how the industry works. Um, mm. And hopefully, you know, we can big up the best drums in the world. <laughs> yeah. but first of all, can you confirm the correct way to pronounce Sona or Sona? I don't know, because I hear so many different versions. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we always say Sonor, because, you know, like the, the German way. Um, if And I've fallen into that, that state if I'm talking to somebody from America, or, you know, in English, I, I just say Sona. Sonar, be, be, yeah. Yeah, but it's not sonar. That's that's different. I know, yeah, because I hear a lot of people say, yeah, it sounds like S-O-N-A-R, which is a exactly. different word. Um, but yeah. I think the Americans are guilty of that, I think, more than <laughs> anyone else, from what I've heard, anyway. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've always thought it's like, so, so sonor, sonor. So yes. Not, yeah. So not Pretty son, good. so not son sonor sonor yeah. okay a little stretched kind of yeah, yeah. no that's cool yeah. that's good good to confirm that and um <laughs> yeah so like first of all like i'd like to find out how you originally got interested in drums wow um i was about i think i was about 12 or 13 um my brother um so i got two brothers a twin brother and an older brother um he he started playing the guitar um I, I don't know when he was a kid and um he was always big into music um a lot of rock and metal stuff and um and and he was in a band um with a, a couple of his friends like only like a little like local band and um when we were at the age where we could go to their shows um we actually went and you know just you know, enjoying their music and the concert feeling. Um, and the drummer of his band always had something, um, something, uh, I, I, I can't really explain it. He, he, he always attracted me, not in a, you know, love yeah. kind of way, but, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and, it, and, and it wasn't even, it wasn't even um, that I was attracted to, him as a person or the way he he played um like you know i i wouldn't say he was technically um at, at a very high level but it was just like the the instrument um you know he made it sing or you know sound and and in in the context of a band that that was kind of like the thing for me i i just i, I never had an interest had any interest in in guitar or bass or you know singing whatever um it was always drums that really stuck to me yeah yeah awesome awesome yeah that's great so um i've heard this on another interview but how did you originally get the job with sonor and what were you doing before yeah so um with when it was when it was time for me to to decide okay you know um what do you want to be when, when you grow up yeah. uh, kind of thing? Um, I was, uh, I had a, I had a few things in my, on my mind, which I was, you know, not really, um, you know, looking back um, today, um, I, I wasn't really super keen to do them in terms of passion, Yeah. but um, you know, it was just jobs. But um, a friend of mine, a drummer friend from my old days, uh, he had a, a copy of a German drum magazine, Sticks magazine, in his in his uh, woodshed. So I was going through it. You know, we were 
just hanging out or tra- playing drums. Um, I actually, that was a funny thing that just came to my mind. Um, it was at a, he had a band, they were covering um, songs and he thought it would be a great idea uh, having me sing. Um, it was a Rage Against the Machine song. I can't remember which mm-hmm. one, but kind of like he, he thought it would be a great idea for me to come in and, and sing, which, you know, forget about it, didn't work. <laughs> You know, um, I'm glad it didn't really work. But anyway, so at that session, um, he had a Styx magazine issue lying around. I was going through it, and I saw an advert of a company, a distribution company, um, that was just like, I don't know, uh, maybe 20 minutes from where I live. I had no idea they existed, um, which obviously is kind of like the fate of distribution companies because they don't really advertise you know, their own company as a brand. Yeah, that's so, cool. yeah. I, I understand that, yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah. Um, and so I was, I was like, oh, you know, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of funny, you know, so they're just outside of where I'm living and they, um, um, they distribute different brands and, you know, also drums, accessories. They, they had Marshall, Cork, um, all kinds of different brands. So, um, I was like, okay, well, you know, let's just let's just try this and, and see where it goes. Um, let's let's just uh, see if, if that's kind of like a path for me uh, to pursue, and and you know, maybe maybe that's kind of fun. And I, I sent them a letter, you know, application, and they they agreed to take me on. And that was like uh, nineteen um, ninety six. I started my training, hmm. um, which was basically. Um, you know, like a business training, um, wholesale distribution uh, um, focused, and pretty pretty early on, I I just I just knew that yeah, this is exactly what you want to do. I mean, you know, you, you're surrounded by drums, by musical instruments every day. Um, all of the the like, I want to say at least ninety percent of the guys working there, they were all musicians. Yeah. Um. So like the 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 mindset was was very very similar. Um, except when it came down to, to bands and certain genres, but you know, but the, the basic mindset was was yeah, the same. Of course. Um, so that was pretty much my start um, coming into um, the industry, pretty much. And I worked there from '96 to 2007. And um, in 2007, I was at the NAMM show for this company. Um, and I met one of the managing directors from Sona, you know, because it's such a small industry, everybody knows each other, you know, the more, the less. And I was, um, I was outside, um, at the convention center in Anaheim and and I, he he came by and we talked, um, for, for a few minutes and he told me that, um, the guy that did art installations at Sona before just left the company December 31st. So we're talking the end of January. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, I, 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 I knew the guy, we, we often dealt with each other because back then I was, um, also responsible for Sabian symbols. So, um, um, you know, Jojo Meyer and all these cats, you know, th- there was always a connection. Yeah. And so he asked me like, if I knew anybody that might be interested in doing the job and I was like. I know somebody, um, a friend of mine, he just, um, he, le- he kind of left the industry, but I, I knew he wanted to be back in, um, because he was a drummer at heart. Uh, he, he's a great guy and, and everything. So I was like, well, you know, I, I may know somebody, I'll talk to him and let you know. He was like, great. Okay. See you. Bye bye. On the, on the plane back to Germany, it, it came to my mind. I was like, why don't I, um, you know, ask them if you know to do the job because where i was at that point was um i i really had a good time working for the distribution company i i still like i have a lot of good memories um i i you know a lot of the guys are you know still my friends and everything i'm not um living very um I'm, i'm actually living close to them um again so that wasn't the point. The point was for me, um, being 
at a distribution company, um, you know, brands come and go. It's like if if you're in like a like a like a bad luck kind of setting, you know, you could like take care of this brand today, and in a couple of months. Um, it's gone and you got the next brand and you're like, okay, so this is now the greatest drum or guitar brand uh, you have to sell to people. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't thought it was fun. I, I thought it was, it was, um, you know, stressful. I didn't thought it was, um, uh, it, it was kind of real because, you know, I, I, I just wanted to focus on one brand only, or at least be in a setting where I, um, knew that the the brands I take care of are like in a um in a in a like a safe spot and you know it's like mid to long term relationship right i get that yeah totally yeah um so actually um a couple of days after i got back home um from nam show i i called up um um the guy and i was like well you know we talk at nam show I thought about it and I would love to to sit down with you and discuss the possibility of having me working artist relations. And he was like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of your guys because I was um, with that distribution company. We all also had remote drumettes, Big Fur Sticks, uh, Sabian. So I knew a lot of the German artists yeah. already. I knew um, some of the international guys like Steve Smith, um, Gavin Harrison. Uh, Jojo and so on. So I was like, you know, I did this for a long time. Um, I'm a drummer. I I know how to, you know, work with brands. Um, um, I love networking and all that. So, and and it just it just happened within, I think, um, I don't know, maybe two weeks or three weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. I sent the my my old company a letter of you know, letting them know that I'm you know, gone. And I started working for Sona March, I think it was March 15, 2007. Yeah. Wow. So, 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 so you've been there for a long time then. Yeah. So, and well, hopefully you'll be there even longer because you seem to really enjoy what you do. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I guess yeah. you get to meet some great drummers and like I, I've heard that you're involved in a lot of the, the artistry work and photography. Yeah. Is, was that, is that correct as well? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. Could you, yeah, explain like what do you do exactly? Because it sounds like on paper, oh. it, it just sounds like you just speak to artists and give them yeah. gear, but you do a lot more than that. I, I know you yeah. do from meeting you yeah. before and, and speaking to you and, and some of the social media stuff, I believe. So mm -hmm. yeah, could you, yeah, maybe kind of list what you do exactly. It's a very important job. Um, okay. Um, well, what I'm, what I'm, well, basically, I, I think in a nutshell, maybe, to start there, um, which most people don't really understand or know, um, is that art isolation is part of the company or the brand's marketing department. Right. So um, even though, let's say, 20, 25, 30 years back, um, art isolation was just mainly hanging out with the artists, you know, taking care of them, making sure that everything was all right on tour, you know, they had their gear and everything. Um, that changed a lot i mean right now i'm you know again i'm part of the marketing team so um basically everything that concerns artists um falls in my uh on my, on my table uh on my desk um which is everything from social media uh the creative part video photo um events everything from a little drum show um where we just you know um go with an artist or something like the UK drum show where we are um, displaying, um, have a few artists going on and uh, maybe a, a, an artist signing. Um, I always help, I also help the company set up the, the two uh, Sonar Days festivals, um, kind of like, you know, headlining the, the, the event team, the, the, the planning team, which was great fun. Um, but I'm also, there's also a big part where I'm involved in, in R and D issues. So, um, all the signature instruments we brought out ever since we, we, we had signature snare drums. Um, I was involved except for one, um, 
where I wasn't involved so heavy because we had two signature snare drums at at once to to um, to design. I see. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of product. There's a lot of social media. Uh, the creative part. Um, so for example, um, I the 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 product launch introduction we did early January. You know, showing people around the factory and highlighting all the products. Um, I came up with the concept, with the idea. I talked to the to the videographer. Um, you know, it's a lot, and it's a lot of like very, very different things. But it's so much fun because yeah. it's so colorful what I'm doing. But but also, of course, art installations, which is you know um, going to shows, meeting artists like you, you know, um, yeah. like you know. Um, hanging out talking see what they need um um and then you know while i'm there i'm I'm trying to think about okay you know today you're you know i don't know visiting this artist um you always wanted to do like maybe a video campaign or i don't know we've got some rd things um in the making with that artist so i mean it's it's just a lot and then of course making sure that they have gear um taking care of backline stuff. Um, I've got my own little backline stock at the factory. Cool. So, I'm, you know, unfortunately not right now, but usually I'm, um, I'm very busy throughout the year packing kids, making sure they're, you know, arrive at their destination in time and everything's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of pressure, but simply that, for example, yeah. I, I know I, I've never really requested a kit for a festival, but I'm sure a lot of drummers yeah. do maybe American guys and stuff. And you, you have to yeah. supply them a kit for maybe one show only. Um, yeah. But there's such a lot of pressure to make sure that it arrives there in time and the guys at the other end know what they're doing and it gets yeah. to the right, the right stage at the right time and the right day. And I, I can imagine it can be very stressful. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those situations where you don't, um, where I don't, really sleep so well until mm-hmm. i know get the call or whatever you know the drums have arrived it's especially for festivals because festivals is always a you know pain yeah totally it's, big pain it's difficult and the guys working there working really hard but there's so yeah. much that they have to do there's yeah. so many different bands and artists to arrange and yeah. even though maybe getting your drum kit to that stage is the most important thing to you. It's to them. It, I guess it's not their number one priority. You've got all these other, so it's, 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 it's difficult because you're relying on other people uh, so much. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I can, I can imagine that's not an easy part anyway, but yeah. um, I, 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 maybe turning up at a show one day and having a beer with one of the artists is quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I guess if you, if you've been to many, like, particularly like big shows or what have you what have your favorite shows been with you with your artists oh my god um most memorable maybe most well uh, well i i can't really say i've got like um you know one artist or one band i kind of like love the most yeah um, no of course yeah I think. um i mean first of all i can't it, it wouldn't be good for my job. No. I, I have to be professional in, in that setting. But um, of course, there's like, um, I, of course, I do have my, my musical heroes, of course, you know. So um, first of all, I, I really just love enjoying going to any kind of show. It's, I love the, um, the, the magic and the energy. Um, and it always happens. It's not like, you know, going to, I don't know, ACDC playing a stadium. Or um, I remember seeing you in Frankfurt um, yeah. a few years back in that in that small um, venue. It, it's it's always great. There's always that special thing going on, which um, then kind of later got me into photography and you know. But anyway, so the most memorable things, uh, I, I I can't really say. I mean, it's um, I think it was um, when was that? I've seen Tool live um, um, in Amsterdam. Hang on, was that? No, it was 2019. Um, I think it was June, May or June. Okay. Um, that was like that was like crazy. Um, you know, um, 
but also I'm I saw um, uh, Aaron Spears with Ariana Grande uh, oh, wow. a few months before, and it, that was a great show too. Even though I'm not an Ariana Grande fan, but it was great, you know. Um, She's got a great voice, man. But she she has yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think yeah, it's it's really hard. It's it's hard. I think actually most of the shows are kind of like um, you know stuck with me and. And as I said, I just love the energy that goes on at, at a concert and seeing the, the people vibe with the band and, you know, the, the, the band usually um, doing everything in their powers to, um, to give their fans everything. Yeah, that's, that's the best way to do it from our point of view. And, you know, I think if we're not trying, um, we don't deserve to be there. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, we've got to try our absolutely. hardest. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that must be, it. Must be strange having to deal with such a, a range of artists from different genres. And I, mm. I guess one thing that must suck is when maybe an artist decides to leave and go to mm. another brand. Like, mm. kind of, how, how does that really hurt when yeah, when that happens? It does. And um, and I don't know how often that. I I guess it doesn't happen that much with with Sona. I compared mm. to the brands. Because when I look at your roster, like especially the bigger guys, the kind of more well-known guys, they they've been playing the, the same you know brand for years and years. And yeah. I guess it's the kind of the younger decades. bands, like decades, yeah, decades and decades. Yeah. And I think that that's that says something to me, mm. um, firstly about the the quality of the product, and I guess mm. the services that you provide. And yeah. I guess maybe it's the the younger guys that kind of flutter around brands more more often and I, I i see it a lot um and i don't really understand why because like the reason mm. uh, the reason i play sona drums is because i think they are the best mm. and i i guess i've been influenced by you know mickey d and people like that but that's the reason i play them i wouldn't want to play anything else even if someone in another brand said hey we'll give you f free drums and I, I'd be like, no, thanks, thank you, but no, yeah. I, I'm I'm happy with my my stuff. Um, yeah. and I, I really don't understand what makes people change. Um, yeah. you know, I can understand if they're not happy with the gear, but I don't understand why they wouldn't be happy with this with any Sony gear. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know whether there's mon money involved with kind of bigger artists. I don't know how it all works because I'm at a very uh, low level, I suppose. Compared to yeah, that. I think. <laughs> I think there's there's a lot of diff very very different reasons for it. Um, um, the I think the, the 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 absolute wrong reason to make a jump is if you think a company like Sonar or any other company you know can help you build your own brand or make your own brand bigger. Ah, right. That's yeah. wrong. Yeah, that's true. Um. And and I remember I had um, I had a I had a few conversations about it a long time ago. Um, um, I remember with one particular artist, he kind of like um, um, we used to have an artist we did a lot for, and and we certainly that's my my boss still you know whenever his name pops up. Um, he always says, well, you know, we made him big, something like that. And it, it's true. Um, we made him big in the drumming community. We didn't really help him play better. Um, that was all on his own. You know, he was the one that played the way he played and, yeah. and you know, the, the quality and everything. We didn't help him get more jobs. We just helped him in that very, very small part of the of his brand world or business if you if you want to say so um which was the drumming community which was you know taking him around and uh clinics master classes workshops festivals but that's pretty much it i think that has changed a lot as well um but going back i think um again there's a lot of different reasons for people to jump ships um i think the the most wrong reason for somebody to, to jump is um you know i don't if they say, you know, I don't feel um, um, su supported in terms of um, them showing my face to the community or, you know, placing adverts and, you know, do social media stuff, 
or you know pay me to go on a tour um th that's not our job no at least not in the beginning that's the drummer's job and um it, yeah i mean it's it's hard if somebody decides to leave because he doesn't have the um, emotional connection to the brand anymore. That's that's the hardest. Um, like you said, you know, you're super happy. Um, yeah, yeah. You've been with Sona pretty much all the time. You, the the drummers that influenced you, like Mickey, um, or maybe Phil, as I see the the, the signed drum well, yeah, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's cool that you can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, um, you spelled so, my name wrong, but um, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I've, ne I've I've never met him. He was a friend of mine in france he was it was when he was doing his solo shows a few years back with his new oh, yeah, band yeah yeah um, yeah yeah that was it yeah and he was playing a small wine bar in france and yeah. i um my friend in france came to my show maybe a few weeks before and i said oh please if i give you this drum head can you get phil to sign it for me or at least ask him because you know i'm yeah, a big yeah. big fan big fan and um yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I leave it there to remind me. And it's a good inspiration for the name of this podcast, Drum for the Song, because I think he's the perfect Absolutely. he's the perfect rock drummer. Um, he is, and he, you know, we all bow down to him. I know, I know, some people criticize him, but like, at the end of the day, he is the most, arguably, the most successful rock drummer. Yeah, there is in the entire world. So yeah, you've got to be doing something right. <laughs> I think yeah. we should all take inspiration from people like Phil. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. He, yeah, he he kind of perfectioned the the whole thing. He yeah. he, he he has that gift. Um, it's so special, it's amazing. But yeah, yeah. Just, just the sheer groove. Phil. But yeah, yeah, totally yeah. big inspiration to me. And uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy, and I, I get frustrated. I don't get frustrated, but I mean. I guess a lot of my friends and who were in bands and bands I've toured with, I'm normally the owner sonar drummer. And mm -hmm. I, I always try and kind of, if they don't know enough about the brand, perhaps I try and big it up as much as possible. And, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. they'll kind of, you know, at least do their own research one day and check it out. And there's obviously a lot of guys that think, Oh, this is, yeah, they're amazing. Or, mm -hmm. But you know, I've, I've, my first kit I bought, I think it was a Force 2001. Mm. Um, it was like a, a blue kind of satin. I don't know. Like, I, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I remember the remember color. The, yeah. yeah, like I remember like a, I had a fusion kit. I yeah. bought it from my first work experience job it, in a music shop in, in South Wales in Cardiff. Um, yeah, and I've never really gone back since. I have experimented with, you know, random drums over the years, but I've always gone back. Mm. And I think for the last... Well, I work. I, I feel old now, but um, <laughs> when I first bought that white sparkle uh -huh. three thousand and seven kit, I think that was like maybe eleven or twelve years ago now. So uh -huh. <laughs> I feel yeah. it's a long time ago. So yeah, since since then I've been playing them. Um, you know, I've 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 bought a few kits over the years, and I picked up a few things secondhand and stuff because I yeah. kind of got really into it. Um, unfortunately i've got rid of a lot of it to buy new new mm -hmm. stuff and it's only so much you can kind of store um and i regret a lot of it um but i was speaking to someone last night on a podcast episode about this he's he's never sold a drum kit um because he thinks his soul is inside that drum kit <laughs> yeah i you know what i i same here i i'm still bummed out about the, the first kit i got was um I dragged from the the basement of a like a youth center, and it was just like it was the most horrible kit. You know, it wasn't any kind of brand, but but for me, it was like, oh my god, it's drums! It was my first kit. Yeah. Um, I finally have something I can I can play on. Set it up in my, in my parents' basement, um, and I, I cleaned it. I um, I tried to find drum heads that would fit, and you know, not having any idea how the, the drum heads would. Inf affect the, the the sound or anything yeah, yeah um you know hoops were missing screws were missing but it was just back then that was like the world to me yeah and, and I, I i i painted it later you know i think we all kind of go through that phase of thinking i need to spray paint my kid you know <laughs> it was a wrap um but 
um, I remember the the snare drum that came with it, with it was a, I, you know, it was a cheap old eighty Sona metal snare drum. It wasn't anything special, but thinking back about it today, I was like, damn, man, I I just I just should have kept the the drum and maybe the, the whole drum kit. Yeah. Um, but it's you know, the problem the problem we find as drummers is that. Yeah, for me anyway, it's storage. They take up so much space. Right. Um, and, you know, it, I guess if you want an expensive kit as well, sometimes you may have to consider selling an old one to buy a new one and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah. It depends on your situation. But, yeah, this is the space. If if I if I could safely store them somewhere that was dry and, you know, not in my, in my garage, which unfortunately some of them are. They're in cases in my yeah. garage. I know it's not the best place. Um, but you know they're there if I need. It's mainly the kind of the the, the lower, the less expensive kits are in my garage, I suppose. Uh-huh. Uh, but I got some nice drums in there. But yeah, um, do you have much of a collection, or do you take things from work, or do you get to keep stuff? Yeah, I mean, I've um, I I do have. I don't know if you see, no, probably not. It's pretty dark in here. There, there's there's something at the top. Yeah. Yeah, there's a 1950s uh, Sona um, script logo, teardrop, um, oh, wow. snare drum wow. in white pearl. Um, it's almost complete. Condition is okay. It's not. It's not the best, but it's you know. Um, and right next to it is uh, a 1962 um, Sona snare drum. When we changed the design to the the new logo, um, which was early 60s, I think 61, 62. Um, so yeah, I'm, I kind of, I just, I just love the way they look and, you know, um, the, the, the stories they tell, you know, because Sona is such a special brand with such a rich history. Yes. Of course. Um, yeah, but I'm actually, I don't have a kid right now. Um, at home, I'm, I'm, I'm always torn. Um, I, I would love to get one back, uh, to put in my my man cave but yeah. i don't have a kit right now to play on unfortunately yeah which mainly is caused because of you know all the moving i did in my life plus um um you know with the work keeping me so busy i really had to decide at one point to say um or decide between do i want to be like a drummer that still plays in a band or bands with you know, a lot of time and energy going into that, plus the very busy job mm. and family. There's only so much I, you can do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I still see my, myself being a drummer at heart, um, even though I don't play in a band right now. But I, I don't think that really matters, you yeah, know. No, not at all. Um, I, I have so much passion for the drum, for the, for the instrument. Um, I'm surrounded by drums every day, you know, it's, and I just love music, so... Right now, that's kind of like enough, but who yeah. knows? Hi, I hope you're enjoying this episode of Drum for the Song. I just wanted to briefly interrupt the interview to tell you about my Patreon page, which is a place where you can support the podcast and, of course, support myself. You can um, sign up to one of the three tiers on there. There's one that's £3 a month, one that is £5 a month, and one that is £10 a month. There are loads and loads of exclusive benefits to signing up, including bonus episodes, merch discounts, Christmas card for myself. Um, If you sign up to the top tier, I'll send you a pair of my drumsticks. Um, Loads of other stuff, so go check it out. It's patreon.com forward slash drum for the song. And um, another way you could support me if you're interested, if you're not bothered about the Patreon thing, if you go to my official website, drumforthesong.com, you can send a donation via PayPal. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching this and enjoy the rest of the show. Drum for the Song podcast. This is an interesting one then. If you, so if you, if you could, say, have one kit in your man cave, right, you know, right now, what would you choose? If you could just pick one kit and one snare drum. Um, I would definitely go for vintage series. Um, and uh, snare drum, well, I would probably I would probably go for one of Benny's drums, probably the brass, because it's so versatile and 
it's just unbelievable how how great it sounds going through all the different you know tuning uh, ranges um yeah that does look great actually um yeah. yeah but but i've been you know from time to time i also look at you know some of the like the old like the hld 590 uh like the real expensive collectors vintage drums that, yeah, yeah like ah yeah. oh, man they're so it's a, it's a scary world that vintage drum world it is I kind of dabbled in it. I've got, I, I don't know if I've probably never told you. I've got one Sona Swinger kit from the, the 70s. Oh, really? Like a, uh, I've only got, a, I think it's a 20 inch bass drum, 12 rack, 16 floor. It's a beat up, as, you know, a little bit rusty, mm-hmm. as you imagine. Mm-hmm. It's like a, like a blue and green swirl wrap on it. I don't know what the, yeah. the official name is for that. But um, yeah, it's, it's great to have as an option. And I've, mm-hmm. I've actually used it for recordings lately. It's, um, this guy I was recording for wanted like a vintage kind of, he wanted like a Motown kind of sound. And I was like, well, yeah. this is the closest thing I've got. It's not technically yeah. the same as what they were using, but yeah, let's, let's, let's go with that. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a di- like, and that was a cheap, I paid like 300 pounds for that whole kit or something. Oh, that's like a great that. deal. So yeah. three, maybe 350. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like when you see some of these, I see some of these snare drums pop up and they're, you know, well, it's the same as the new stuff. The new stuff, you know, the high-end new stuff isn't cheap, but like some of this yeah. collect- collectible stuff and you realize how many different types there are. I'm like, I don't want to go down yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. It's, no, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, you got you to gotta be careful where you start. I mean, it's, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I just, um, uh, Thomas Hockey, he, um, they're in the studio right now recording for the, the new Meshuggah record. Nice. And and he sent me he sent me that little clip I uh, we posted on uh, Instagram maybe a week ago. Um, and he uses the the HLD five ninety. Um, and he he sent me pictures of it like before. And it's just like it's so sexy. I yeah. mean, heavy yeah. probably as well. Like oh a, yeah. A lot, oh, of yeah. Them, a lot of them weigh a lot, which is sometimes yeah. not, not that practical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, no, that's cool. I thought. You know, with the vintage series line, then I can tell you're obviously a fan of that, and it's something I've been tempted by, and hopefully I can get a snare drum soon. So I, I have recorded the first Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons album. We had a variety of snares, and um, our producer borrowed one from a local drum store in Cardiff called Drummers On, and um, we used it on quite a few tracks, um, and. I think the producer bought it after that session. He's, he's still got the producer still got it in his studio, and I yeah. got to use it, which was great. And um, yeah, I want to get my own at some point. But yeah, you know, I'd love a, if I could have a, an acoustic kit that I could play as loud as possible in my house. I'd probably go for a vintage as well. Yeah, I think, I think. even though I haven't played one yet, I, I just imagine I'd have fun playing it. You know, and um, yeah, they, they sound so. Um... I, I think when, when we when we um, when we develop the series, um, they, they don't they don't really sound like anything else we have right now. Like you know, let's say like the modern kind of era of Sonar. Yeah. Um, and and that's what makes them so so special um, because it's it's a real option. Um, the 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 fact that we have the rounded bearing edges on those drums instead of like a forty five degree, that's just um, that makes such a big difference. Um, mm. I mean, I, I when when we started with with that series, and I talked to to artists about it the first time, they were like, "So how do they sound?" I was like, "They they kind of play, they kind of sound a little like muffled, but in a in the best positive way." I mean, not you know, forget about muffled being kind of negative. Um, um, yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of drummers talk of it as a negative thing, and I, like I exactly, I quite often muffle and dampen drums to, tre- yeah. to achieve the sound I want to achieve. You know, so yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But but they just sound so so nice, and um, and and we have um, you know the 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 interesting thing is um, which I'm really glad of, um, for is the fact that we have so many different artists playing the vintage series. So. It's it's not really like the jazz kit, you know. Um, we, it's it's definitely not. We've got Steve Smith playing it. We've got Benny playing. Um, um, I remember um, Alex uh, Carapides. He's in, in Wolf. He used to be in Wolf Mother. Oh, he yeah. played them on on a few shows. He still plays one. 
Um, I had uh, Jared Chevelson from Boy Sets Fire play one on tour. Oh, that's cool. And they all just love it. And it's so, like, you know, from, from Steve all the way, you know, with his jazz fusion um, music and then going to Boy Sets Fire with Jared. It's just, so there's so much in between. It, it just, and of course, they, they just look so good. I mean, ah, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe one day I'll. I'll get one. But yeah, I, I've never gigged my SQ1 yet, so I need to gig that first. <laughs> I'll take that on tour. Um, I can't wait to take that on tour. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm just yeah. going to be I'm going to be afraid of people touching it. And, <laughs> and that's, that's the thing, man. With this level we're at, the, I guess some of the venues are not that, not that big. Um, yeah. And yeah, I guess they're very sweaty and, you know, yeah. throw beer, people throw beers and things like that. And it does scare me a little bit. I guess if you're miles away on a big, big stage you know <laughs> no one's gonna touch your drum kit it's quite nice yeah but yeah man um like i know i know a lot about sona over the years to know sorry <laughs> um, <laughs> no like, for, so for someone maybe listening to this that maybe isn't that familiar with the brand or maybe mm-hmm. it's just seen the logo maybe seen a few guys on the internet playing them can you give me a few of the really positive points of the brand you know mm. why you know why are they so good why why are they maybe a little bit pricier than certain other brands um mm. could you ex- maybe explain or big big them up yeah. a little bit <laughs> all right all right here we go so um the the, the i think the m- most important um, aspect when it comes to to Sona, or something I I usually start with is like the you know the history thing. I mean, um, the company exists uh, exists since 1875, which makes it the longest, the oldest drum company around. Yeah, I, I think what the company really, really um, um, kind of. Uh, drew from a lot over the, the all those years is the company really grew up with music evolving over the decades. You know, point. yeah. Back in 18, 1875, we didn't have rock or anything. It was just you know that's like future future thing. But then when when um, uh, when jazz music came came up, uh, and then rock music and 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 all those genres. Um, the sauna was always part of the the evolution of music, which I think is something that people sometimes forget when when we're talking about so you know such a rich history. Um, um, and I think sauna is all, also special, um, you know, besides the fact that it's so old, but also we've always tried to be as open as possible with with musical genres. Uh, we never wanted to be like the the metal ba- uh, brand. We never wanted to be the rock brand, the jazz brand, the hip hop, whatever. Yeah. Um, it, we just wanted to make the the best instrument with all our know how and, and experience possible. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the the question, how is Sona often so pricey? Is you know, of course, I've, we're getting asked that a lot. Um, it basically, um, it's a simple answer. It's made in Germany. It's Germany is not the most uh, inexpensive place to produce any kind of goods. It's it's just you know with with the way our wages work here, like the uh, and everything else that that's uh, connected to that. It's just impossible to really produce something cheap. Yeah, um, that's not our thing. We don't want to do it. Actually, it's. No. It's not our philosophy. Um, it's something that the the, the company um, uh, founder uh, never wanted, and uh, you know, I think it's 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 a, you know almost a little romantic if you think about it and say, well, yeah, you know, he he was right. He he was always looking at quality, at you know how to make things um, like the best for consumers, for users, for drummers. Yeah, but also. Um, something else that that Sona, um, uh, you know, uh, stands for Sona a lot is the fact that Sona always was uh, very, very innovative. I mean, 
um, at the factory, we've got um, a little museum, and there's still that very like that super simple first single pedal we built back in 1900. I mean, it looks like you know, forget about the looks, about the the, the noise it, it it makes when you when you touch it. But but that's kind of like it's so crazy to see all those things from that time, you know. Um, and then you go f a little further, seeing more innovations, more developments. Um, the the first three way strainer that we that we did back in I think nineteen thirty. Um, um, we even had a square bass drum once. I think <laughs> that was a, I didn't know that. A, 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 true. Um, I think that was like nineteen. I want to say 1930s, maybe. Yeah. I, I still, I still see the like the the old catalog from back then, um, you know, in my head um, with that square bass drum. It didn't really last. It, it was, but but it's it's just crazy to think about. Um, there was a guy in the 1930s thinking about you know the shape of a drum, how to make it different, sound different. Um, is it, you know, what kind of benefits um, does the drummer have using that thing? Even though, you know, back in the 1930s, we're not talking about real, you know, band kind of settings or drummers. But yeah, that, that's just that's just amazing for me to see. Um, and and I, I tell people um, um, every time still, even after 14 years working for the company, every time I go down to production, um, um, it's. I always see little things um, I never saw before, and you know, some I experienced some some little details, and I was like, "Oh, you know, that's clever." Yeah, that's that that's how we do it since thirty, forty years. You know, yeah. it's nothing special, you know, but so clever. It's you know, the like little details. I think, um, yeah, that kind of yeah that that kind of makes um sona so special i think um and and then um i think what you said earlier having so many you know sona never had like that really really big artist roster our artist roster was always small um right now we've got maybe about 300 drummers around the world um it's relatively small yeah yeah it's it's yeah. small yeah i agree but at the same time um um, same here, you know, we're about the quality and not the quantity. And I think that speaks, you know, something as well. It's just, yeah. yeah well, I, I feel more honored to be part of it now. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. Thank you. No, it is, it is, mission completed. Yeah, it is, it is pretty much mission complete. No, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for being part of the list. And I, I've got a few catalogs that I've got on my bookshelf and my name's in there. And it's like, wow, that's Great. so cool. That's so cool, and I'm yeah, very, I, very proud of it. <laughs> That's a new the, one. This is the, the the new one that just came today. Um, so, uh, and it looks, uh, it's just amazing. I mean, I haven't seen <laughs> like a like a new print catalog from any brand um, that nice. And your name is in there as well. So, amazing. yeah, thank you, the artist. I'm, I'm there somewhere. Great. Yeah, that's amazing. I've been meaning to email you actually. I because I checked. I went on there recently to have a look and I think I need to update my photo because it was from like 10 years ago. So yeah, maybe sure. I'll, I'll send you a new photo and maybe a new biography um, about, about the new band and stuff. And that'd be great. It's my fault for not uh, keeping you updated really. So, it's all right. It's that's all right. Cool. That's, that's cool. No um, yeah. Yeah. So with, with, like you said, you don't have a large art, artist roster. Yeah. For someone to become a Sona endorsee, Mm -hmm. What are you looking for specifically? I imagine it varies. You get the kind of guys who are like educators. You get mm -hmm. the guys that are just in bands who play, you know, mm -hmm. big stages and stuff. And then you get maybe you get the clinician side of the world, yeah. um, which is completely different. And I imagine that's probably more important because their audience is drummers, whereas people who like my band there's only going to be a small percentage of the of the audience that are, that play drums mm -hmm. so i can understand mm -hmm. why that's probably considered a more important area for, for you guys would you agree mm -hmm. with that in some ways uh, well 
enough. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't totally agree with saying the one artist that maybe has more influence in the drumming community versus the other that only plays with a band is hmm. you know more or less important than the other one. Um, okay, fair enough. And uh, and the question of what do we look for in an artist, um, I think, kind of gives the answer because I'm always trying to. Um, I I think the artists always it, it it just have to be it has to be that kind of fit and match um, both ways. Yeah, you know um, the artist and the the brand, the brand and the artist. Um, and and the 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 toughest thing today is um, which was super easy, like let's say twenty years ago. You know, talking about you know what kind of artist do you want to have. Um, the tough thing today is um, everybody brings something different to the table. It, it's so uh, the variety of of people is so big, and you know, then you got the people who understand like their kind of own brand, um, um, which doesn't really sound very romantic, but, um, but but it's something we are looking for. You know, if yeah, yeah. if they understand what what they do. Um, so the, the question, what do we look for in an artist is not that simple to answer, but I think um, maybe, maybe, maybe when I, when I start the, the, the process, maybe the first thing I look in is, okay, how do we fit the guy and how does the, the guy fit us? And then, um, you know, trying to find that, that spot and then going further and say, okay, is, what he does with the band or educational or, you know, like a clinician kind of thing. Um, is that something we kind of need right now? Yeah. How much does it help the company? Because, you know, I need to get paid. It is what it is. I mean, we're still a company, a business, right? Yeah. Even though we, we have all that passion, but you know, bills have to be paid, um, for us to, to continue making what we do. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's kind of like the the road I go. Like you know, how's 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 like the the the, the matching thing? What does he bring to the table that we can make use of, and how can we help him? Um, um, you know, grow. Even though I don't see that as our responsibility, as I mentioned earlier. But no. um, yeah. Um, do you, do you look? I imagine you must, especially these days, you must look at like social media, like followers and things to some degree. Yeah. Is that is that yeah. vitally important nowadays? It yeah. Be, yeah, it's very important now. Yeah. Especially as I, there are no live shows right now, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it was it was even important before um, Corona um, hit the whole world. I mean, if see, twenty five years ago when we didn't have social media. Um, most companies or most guys doing what I'm doing for Zona would probably go out and say, you know, how was, um, how did he do in terms of what the band um, perform in terms of, you know, records yes. uh, sales and, and ticket sales? And, um, you know, what kind of, what kind of influence does he have in the drumming community, you know, in magazines? Yeah. So everything was based on that thing. And then it's, I don't want to say it shifted because that's still, at least for me, it's still important. But that that social media thing um, um, on top just got you know it got interesting for us mm. because all of a sudden there was a whole new kind of world to to make the, the the brand popular or you know transport the brand to people we've never met before. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. To make yeah definitely to make people especially with the algorithms that work now. Yeah. If someone's scrolling through. Their Instagram or TikTok, even which I, I don't even know if you have a profile on TikTok, but um, no, not yet. But if you if a drummer pops up playing a set of Sona drums, mm. and you know it sounds great or the players particularly good, people are going to be like, oh wow, that's cool, and it just makes mm. the brand awareness bigger, I suppose. So yeah, um, because you don't the way it works, you don't have to be following certain pages to see things crop up because I see because it's all hashtags and all this stuff. Um, mm. 
and when I'm scrolling through mine, I'm, I'm like half of it is people I follow and half of it is just hashtags that it thinks I'm going to be interested in. Which yeah. Mainly drums and, and you know, animals and cats and stuff like that. <laughs> that's what, that's I know pretty, the struggle, especially pretty, with cats. Yeah, it's pretty much my feed. Um, yeah. yeah. It's crazy, man. But yeah, okay, that's interesting to know. And um, yeah. I guess we, you would expect anyone to, who maybe sends you an application, you'd expect them to already be playing your drums? Um, you know, and, and maybe someone at my level, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, not. not well, not really. I mean, okay. If uh, I never really thought about that that question before in detail, but not really because I think um, if if you would come to me as you know a brand ex endorser and you know tell me hey i would love to play your drums um the question i would ask myself is do you mean it are you really like passionate about the 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 the, the products or the, the the company the brand whatever yeah, yeah or are you just looking into uh looking for you know the best deal and are you sending the application out to all the companies yes yeah exactly that's and I guess you've got friends in other companies, I, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, but but, but we, we don't share that. I mean, okay, first okay. of all, I mean, you know, we can't technically um, by law. Oh, okay. Um, they did data protection. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but also, um, you know, sometimes you, you you have that gut feeling of okay, this this application that uh, was sent in the exact same form to that guy as well yeah, and the yeah. other guy and the other guy and sometimes sometimes even i get requests like uh you know dear tama drums i would like to <laughs> endorse your, your your product i was like just, oh what just copied and pasted it and sent yeah, it to a so different email address yeah that's yeah yeah delete yeah that's not so <laughs> clever yeah. um i think you know the the something i um i experienced over all these years is um if if the artist has the exact same passion or almost exact same passion as we i and the guy that builds the drums the guy that paints the drums our product managers the guys in sales have about the, the brand um if if that's like if that level is reached it's so much easier to work with somebody oh yeah I can imagine because you all already um it, it it's almost like you're, you're speaking the same language yeah um i think that's um yeah that that kind of gives me um a great feeling about somebody asking for an endorsement um and i'm not saying that this is like the the most important thing it's not but mm. it, it just makes it so much easier down the road dealing with the person you know yeah, you want them to have to feel passion for for the brand and and yeah. the gear, you know. Yeah, I get that. So, um, <laughs> leading on to that, if you could, you don't have to answer this, but it would be interesting to know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if, if there was a there's if there's one non Sona drummer out there that you wish played Sona, who would it who would it be? <laughs> oh my God! Are you allowed to answer that? I don't know. Probably you know, wishful uh... thinking. So this, I mean, I there's there's two guys on my on my mind that come to my uh, that that just popped up immediately when when you when you answer that okay uh, when you when you ask that question. But I I'm not sure if I'm supposed to tell. Okay, who the okay guys you, don't, are. you don't have to. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. It's one of those things. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, there are definitely. Um, I I remember um, I can probably say that I mean um, you know uh, 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 Christopher Rammstein he used to play Sona for a couple of years then he moved to, moved on to to another brand um, which was very 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 unfortunate for me um, and you asked you asked uh, um, earlier if if it's like a sad thing for me if people uh, cancel or you know switch to other companies yeah it is I mean. Yeah. You know, you you become friends. The more sometimes more, sometimes less. 
um, you start a kind of relationship um, with most guys. It's, um, you know, uh, with the time going, you know, um, um, you know, it, it, you know, the relationship gets gets just deeper and deeper, and and, and you you become friends maybe, and yeah, um, it's just hard if somebody leaves. And and Christoph Christoph was one of those guys. I definitely say, well, you know, that was like a super bummer. He he's a great guy. Um, I I still love him. Um, he he was a perfect fit for the brand. I know yeah. he, he loves the product, but mm. you know, well, to be honest, when I asked the question he was one of the people that came to mind that I was aware of that recently ah. switched. Yeah. Cause you know, he said, you know, in such a big band as well. And, and yeah. it was a big shock to me when I read that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. It was a big shock when he, when he called me. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. You obviously, you obviously, I'm not going to ask for any details, but yeah, it just be a big <laughs> shock, big shock. Cause I, I don't really understand why it was a perfect fit. You know, they're internationally the biggest German rock band internationally yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if, if they're bigger bands within germany itself but um yeah, yeah absolutely it, yeah yeah, it's, it's, yeah but it, you know it was a perfect fit because he he and his drumming style as well just kind of just matched this and like i've seen them live a few times and yeah his kid always sounded amazing and yeah yeah it yeah. probably sounds less good now of course <laughs> whatever he's playing now is not as of course. good. <laughs> yeah whatever he's playing now whatever they are i don't know I, some yeah. kinds of yeah i, I don't know what he does yeah. no that's cool man um <coughs> okay we're right. coming towards the end now um i've got a patreon page and one of the benefits of my top tier patrons is that they get to ask a guest a question so i've got one question <laughs> for you from gareth richards who's also from wales <laughs> um and i think it's, it is a good question um, is the wood used in the making of sonar drums ethically sourced and do you support any conservation projects in order yeah. to replace resources used in the manufacturing process? Wow. Th that's a great question. It is. I think that's so a great question. Well. <laughs> um, yes, it is. So what we do is, um, and, you know, even if we, would be super bad guys, which we are not, and you know would say, well, we uh, we don't care about the environment. You know, we just do whatever we want. We couldn't. I mean, right now with all the regulations and law in laws in place, um, for example, the ebony veneer that's not a real ebony makasa veneer anymore since a long, long time. And and I know pe people are always sad when they hear it's not like the real deal. But at the same time, it's like, well, you know, think about what you do to the nature. If, if, if every company would still be able to get that veneer, it's just, you know, um, so yes, first of all, we have a, a, a main supplier for all the veneer um, um, uh, plywood we get. Um, it's, it's a big company in Germany. Um, and they are actually kind of monitoring um, the whole, um, um, you know, what kind of wood they they get. You know, is it from from uh, from any kind of you know weird source or anything? They're not they're not touching it anyway. Yeah. So we make sure that's in place. Um, I think that's called compliance today. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so that's very important for us we've shifted uh, from many um natural veneers to artificial veneers over the time um you know ebony being one of it um even though it makes some people mad or sad because it's not the real deal but hey i mean it still looks great it still looks natural yeah. but we do um so much for the for the environment by not using the you know uh the the, the real thing um then we have, um, for example, for the for the um, the uh, the educational products we do, the ARF sector, which is still like a huge, huge part of the, the company. Besides drums, um, we use only FSC certified woods. Okay. Um, so you know that being said, I mean I know there's like a like a um, like a like an FSC audit. Um, and they're very, very serious about it. Like every year, um, they're just testing everything. Um, there is no loophole we could 
you know, that exists that we could go through uh, to avoid anything like that. And you have to pass those audits to get the FSC um, stamp logo. Uh, you're not allowed to use it um, when you don't have the audits completed. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, most of the most of the woods we use is always from um, uh, from um, what is it called uh, recreational sources. So it's it's specifically grown for that thing. It's you know it's not like somebody goes to the rainforest yeah. um, like those idiots from the palm oil industries yeah. or whatever Amazon. and just yeah yeah and chops down you know football fields of of rainforest um it's it's just planted for that purpose no kind of you know rainforest or any important um a part of the, the the earth is is kind of affected by us building drums yeah but excellent question i i love it yeah because we just had the we just had the conversation um um talking about a new orf video um because there's a new product coming out um soon and and you know you know a little besides drums but same here we we talked about you know can we make the um uh um all those things be part of the the video as well because we we actually do a lot and we want people to know about and i think that's like a super super important thing i mean totally yeah Totally, and yeah. I get it's it's not a kind of. I guess many drummers don't even think about it. You know, when they think of drums, absolutely and, not. And, yeah, um, You're right. Where 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 is all this? Where are these resources coming from? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Yeah, it is a good question. I thought it was a great question. Um, yeah. And then I, I'm going to ask you a quick ten question, quick fire round. So you're going to give right. me give me quick answers, just so people can know you a little bit better. So. Okay. Hot or cold weather? Oh my god! Uh, hot water, uh, water, oh. <laughs> weather. weather yeah, yeah, that's okay. Uh, daytime or nighttime? Oh, geez, that's that's hard. Uh, oh, some, both worlds. Uh, nighttime. Okay, okay. Sweet or savory? Sweet. Yeah. Guitar or bass? <laughs> maybe a guitar okay yeah. um if you were playing drums would you be using nylon or wooden tip drumsticks wood yeah me too yeah john bonham or neil pert <laughs> john bonham okay sorry yeah that's cool uh yeah. <laughs> the beatles or the rolling stones Probably the Beatles. Cool. Yeah. Cle clear or coated drum heads? Coated. Same. Um, I guess this one, well, if you were playing a gig or if you were watching a gig, do you prefer a big or a small venue? Uh, well, I, as I said earlier, it... <laughs> yeah. it's really hard. I'd probably have to pass on this. Maybe the small, because we all see we all start small yeah and and it, it yeah there's something special about small and starting out as a as an artist as a band so yeah. i think that's more yeah. special yeah yeah let's rock and roll um yeah and then if you were playing drums what are you what's your favorite time signature to play in wow i'm i was always a pretty pretty straight up 4-4 four, four guy i mean yeah i i love where all the 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 stuff is going to um oh that that's hard to say yeah I probably gotta pass that's cool man most but people most it, people it, say 4-4 four, four. <laughs> yeah i mean if it would be for me i would be the 4-4 four, four guy for sure but yeah. i'm um hearing and seeing so many different styles you know um you know, watching a video of Benny, yeah. watching a video of Steve Smith and Aaron Spears and Chris Coleman, that's very, um, that's always a big, big um, influence and, and source of um, um, 
you know, creativeness and, you know, ins inspiration. Ins yeah. yeah, totally. And yeah, yeah, I guess being surrounded by those guys all the time and, you know, I guess you're involved in the videos, the promotional videos that those yes. guys tend to be a part of quite yeah. regularly. And, and there's, you know, there's loads of other guys as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, some of them blow my mind, but it's what I listen to is the sound. I always put headphones on. Um, yeah. Because I guess... You, I guess most people are watching these videos just through their iPhone speakers and it's like, yeah, that. unfortunately. And so mm. they need to sound good through an iPhone as well. Yeah. I guess relative to other things they listen to on their iPhone, but um, to, yeah, mm. to, to hear drums or cymbals, man, you've got to stick your headphones in, I think to, to, to hear the quality, but I um, couldn't agree more. Yeah. So yeah, if anyone's listening to that, make sure you've always got a set of <laughs> headphones handy. Um, uh, the la last question now, I, I ask everybody this, so mm -hmm. if you could build a dream band with yourself on drums, who would you have playing the other instruments? And they can be dead or alive. Uh, whoa, okay. <laughs> How much time do we have? Yeah. We, as long uh, as you want, you know. It's, it's all all right, good, good, good. Let me, let me think. I would probably... Um, It's tough, especially. That's if you, a tough, yeah. but it's 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 a great question. Mm. Um, I would probably. Oh my god! Um, the, the the first person that came to my mind, just also because I I just saw the the documentary on on Apple TV, is um, um, Adam Yao from from the Beastie Boys. Cool. That's different. Because the BC Boys were like the first band I got into, the first band I was, I, you know, fell in love with. Yeah. Um, you know, still a big fan. Um, and he's not around anymore. Um, but, but he was just such a crazy and visionary artist. So I, I guess I would, it would be him. And you know what? I, I would just jam with him for hours and hours and not, <laughs> you know, Forget about the rest. You know, we don't need a singer. Um, but no, um, man, I think the, the hardest thing is, yeah, so Adam Yao would be on bass guitar. I would be on drums. Um, guitar player, that's that's heavy. Mm. Um, you can always have two guitarists if it makes it easier. Oh, my God, no. Now, Please no, stop. No, okay, okay, okay. No, sorry, I thought that. It helps narrow it down. No, man. Um. And there's so many great guitar players in the world. Yeah, yeah. But not 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 one like, you know. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I would probably even do without a singer. I mean, it's drum um, and bass. Yeah, like like a real, you know. Again, um, you know, I think most people don't even know how much. Or how creative you can you can be with just one instrument, um, and I think we we didn't really explore that all the way through yet. Um, That's fair enough. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, oh my god. Sorry, it's man. Hard. It's hard, man. If that, you can stick with that, man, if you want drums and bass. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'll stick with that. But I will think about it further and let you know. Um, okay. If anything better. Can came to my mind yeah it is a, it is a bit of a shock because where do you start thinking do you think of bands you grew up on and bands you yeah you you listen to now or bands you're associated with it must yeah. be so difficult to kind of know where to start thinking so yeah and then it's the the, the genre thing you know mm. what would you do like a rock band or kind of like a, a i don't band. know yeah <sighs> we've had some weird and wonderful answers so lots of com <laughs> lots of combinations of different genres and styles it's pretty cool so but yeah, i don't know yeah. it's, it's a good it's a good question to end on and I, it's yeah. just interesting to see what people come up with man but um yeah, yeah but um no I, i've really enjoyed this and it's been really great to kind of speak to you one-on-one -on -one pr properly without there being a band playing outside yeah. and <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and yeah i some really interesting um stuff about the brand and and your job and interesting um kind of tips really for anyone who's maybe at that st stage of their career where 
they mm. might be looking for endorsements and how yeah. to go about it or how to not go about it. So yeah. I thank you for that. And I imagine, you know, other brands would have a similar kind of uh, way of thinking when it comes to that, whether it is symbol yeah. and sticks and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, thanks for your time, Thomas. Thank and, you uh, so much. Uh, that thanks, was fun. For, thanks for everything you do and for just being a great guy and always replying to my Thank emails. You, so on to, you, you reply to my <laughs> emails the best out of all my <laughs> endorsements. Uh, appreciate you're, that. You're the best email replier. So, uh, Thank you yeah. so, so much. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's cool, man. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, we'll speak soon and I'll let you know when this is out. And, uh, Thank keep, you so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you. We will. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Thanks, Dane. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening to this episode of Drum for the Song podcast. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Also, if you could leave me a review or leave a comment, that would be fantastic too. You can also follow me on social media at Drum for the Song or at Dane underscore drums. If you're on Facebook, you can search for Dane Campbell Drummer or join the Drum for the Song official Facebook group. If you'd like to support the podcast, you could consider buying some merchandise from drumforthesong.com or consider supporting me via Patreon for additional content. Any support like this is gratefully appreciated, but I would like to give extra special thanks to my top tier Groovemaster patrons who are listed in the description below. Thanks so much for listening or watching this far. And if you're a drummer, don't forget to drum for the song.